A model steam engine test plant, part 27. After enlarging the primary air holes in the last episode, and with the burner still having the two number 8 gas jets fitted, the steaming capability and performance is now transformed. Not as good as a coal-fired boiler, but simpler and cleaner to use. The next job is to remove the boiler and mill the slot in the baseboard. Personally, I have found this to be an interesting experiment, but I am puzzled why the boiler didn't steam well in the first place, as it is, after all, a commercially manufactured item. There isn't any pressure showing on the pressure gauge, but when I open the steam valve on the turret, quite a lot of water rushes out, because there's quite a lot of condensation capability of the long steam pipe and the turret itself. All I have to do now is just sit and wait. There is a bit of a water leak from the check valve. The cloth that I'm using is already wet. I picked up a bit more water from the check valve leak, then I held the cloth against the burners and the water in the cloth turned to steam. These burners are really hot now. They were quite hot anyway with the original configuration, but nowhere near as good as this. I'm going to experiment further. I've turned off the gas and I've removed the cable tie and now I'm withdrawing the gas pipe. And I'm going to fit another silicone rubber gas pipe, which is currently connected to the large gas canister, which just contains butane gas. As I mentioned in a previous episode, the small gas canister contains 70% butane and 30% propane. This gives a bit more pressure, which is better but does have its disadvantages. With the increased pressure, the evaporation of the gas inside the tank is increased. And because the gas tank is quite small, it ices up very quickly and the gas is chilled and the pressure soon drops to a very low level. Using a naked flame at the chimney, I light the gas. Initially, it takes a while for the gas to come through. That's because the piece of silicone rubber tubing is full of air. The first thing I'm going to do is check whether there's a flame at the top of the chimney, and there isn't. In fact, the small flame on the blowtorch went out with the products of combustion. Using butane, the pressure soon started to rise. The steam, you can see, by the way, is coming from the blowdown valve of the water gauge, which needs tightening. This clip is in real time and you can see the needle moving on the pressure gauge. While I was waiting, I had a look round to see whether I had any really good ceramic, and I did. These are a couple of pieces I got from Mike Abbott many years ago, and this is all that's left from a couple of ceramic burners that I made. I'm going to see if I can find some more of this type of ceramic, it's really good. At this stage, I changed the gas source back to the smaller canister, which is 70-30 butane propane mix. Here, as you can see, the pressure is rising towards 50 psi. But in this clip, the video is running at 200%, so it's moving faster than it really did. You may have noticed in previous episodes that to prevent chilling of the smaller gas tank, I place it in a tub of water. But watching the small amount of steam coming from the water gauge blowdown valve, it might be a good idea to route a pipe into the water tank where the gas tank sits, just to keep the water aired and prevent any chilling at all. Over 50 psi is showing on the clock now. I'll open the steam valve and have a look at the steam. Silly me, I forgot that steam is an invisible gas. It's turning to water vapour in the area of the pressure gauge, but it's invisible as it leaves the valve. And the good thing is, when I close the steam valve, the pressure recovers very quickly, which is more than it did in the previous orientation of the gas burner system. These simple indicators tell me that there is quite a good heat source which is keeping the water hot. In no time at all, the boiler reaches its working pressure of 60 pounds per square inch, and the safety valve starts to blow off. This is a pop safety valve, but it's not exactly popping. It's doing a really good impression of something else. Severe flatulence. But it's not making a noise all the time like Stuart's safety valves do. As I open the steam valve, the pressure drops. Then I close the steam valve and it rebuilds very quickly. I set the safety valve blow-off pressure using compressed air, and I think I got it right. At this stage I turned off the gas, and I was busy cleaning around the steam plant 
mopping up the water leaks from various places. This water mainly came from the check valve because as I depressed the ball in the check valve, a lot of water shot out onto the baseboard. Even though the gas is turned off, the pressure is remaining at 60 pounds per square inch. This is a good sign, but then again this is a large boiler and there's quite a lot of metal, so it stays hot for quite a while. And don't forget, there is nothing connected to this boiler to dissipate the steam, so just had to wait. The water gauge blowdown valve is still leaking a very small amount of steam. I think I'm definitely going to pipe this into the water pot where the gas canister sits. It's not going to heat the water, it will just keep it aired. To conclude this episode, I'm removing the condenser tank and the chimney. Now I need to let some time elapse before I can remove the boiler from the baseboard. I need to do this, as I mentioned earlier, so I can mill the slot in the baseboard to allow access to the screws underneath that hold the gas burners to the boiler itself. I can't do much else at the moment because I've ordered a couple of injectors from Jubilee Fittings and they haven't arrived yet. In this clip I'm unscrewing the exhaust pipe inside the chimney and here I'm removing it with a pair of pliers. And that is it for this episode. I will leave you with a gratuitous shot of the boiler cooling. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.